Stations of the Cross with St. Eugene de Mazenod. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Veronica gently wipes the face of Jesus with her veil, eases his suffering with a loving gesture, a small act of kindness in a world bound up in hatred and cruelty. How does the suffering I see around me almost every day make me feel? Do I have the confidence to go against the crowd and make friends with someone who is unpopular or unloved, or do I neglect to do the little things that I can do? A thought from Oblate Tradition Eugene wandered the alleyways of Marseille, usually dressed simply as a priest and not in his bishop's robes. In his ministry, Eugene sought to see Christ in the many faces of the poor. We pray, Lord, Give me the strength of purpose to stand up for the truth and not be troubled about the consequences for myself. May I never use my age, gender or prejudices as an excuse to do nothing. Help me to do something, however small, to help others in their distress. The Seventh Station Jesus falls for the second time. All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. Do not leave me alone in my distress. Come close. There is no one else to help. Weak from the beatings, struggling to pick himself up and carry on, Jesus shares in the hopelessness and misery endured by so many people in the world. Today, there are about 59 million people who are forcibly displaced worldwide. So many people are uprooted from family and neighbours and have to begin again building community or even being accepted in a new country. How would I feel having to leave everything and everyone I know and love? A thought from Oblate Tradition In his first sermon as a priest, on Ash Wednesday 1813, in the Madeleine Church in Aix-en-Provence, Eugene spoke in the local dialect. This very early morning Mass was attended mainly by the poor and marginalised people of the area. Eugene's words shocked the local wealthy people, including his mother. I recall some of the words of that sermon. Come now and learn from us who you are in the eyes of faith. Poor of Jesus Christ, all you who are oppressed by misery, listen to me. You are God's children, heirs to his eternal kingdom, chosen portion of his inheritance. You are, in the words of St. Peter, a holy nation. You are children of the Most High. We pray. Lord, grant me the gift of sensitivity that I may always act with kindness and compassion. Help me to love unconditionally and to offer support to others who are in need of help. The Eighth Station Jesus speaks to the women. A crowd of people followed him, including many women who grieved and lamented over what was happening to him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Our world is full of suffering women. Many are mothers whose dignity has been wounded 
abused by discrimination and injustice. Often these mothers find themselves getting deeper and deeper into debt to provide for the basic needs of their family. They are being forced into the hands of loan sharks or payday lenders. Many turn to food banks to feed their families. What do I do to ease the wounds and fears of suffering women? A thought from Oblate Tradition Eugene had many friends among the fishwives of Marseille and exercised a special ministry to them. Saint Eugene encourages me to do what I can with his words. Be grateful for all the good the Lord helps us to accomplish. We pray. Lord, give me the grace to see through your eyes so that I may respond to the cries of my brothers and sisters with generosity and compassion, to love as you love. May I live more simply that others may simply live. The Ninth Station Jesus Falls for the Third Time Lord, I know you will never stop being merciful to me, Your love and your loyalty will always keep me safe. May all who come to you be glad and joyful. May all who are thankful for your salvation always say, How great is the Lord! I am weak and poor, O Lord, but you have not forgotten me. You are my Saviour and my God. Hurry to my aid. The third fall of Jesus shows me again the crushing power of the cross in my own life and in the lives of others. Today, many innocent men, women and children are made to bear the cross of other people's faults. I know many suffer injustice, poverty and degradation through the excessive greed, arrogant pride and lack of respect evident in the world today. Do I place burdens on the shoulders of others? Am I careful to buy goods from factories or companies that work in an ethical way so as not to inflict more discomfort and danger on the workers for my own gain? A thought from Oblate Tradition Eugene knew many dark moments in his lifetime. One of these was the constant pain of his parents' separation. He knew depression and rejection from people in whom he had placed his trust. His faith sustained him. Throughout these difficult times, his mantra was, All our trust is in God. We pray. Give me a compassionate heart, so that when my brothers and sisters are suffering, I do not add insult to their injury and increase their troubles, but seek to ease their wounds by prayer and loving actions. The Tenth Station Jesus is stripped of his garments. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Crucified people in the time of Jesus were stripped of all their clothes. It was one more step in the process of ultimate humiliation. I can only imagine the embarrassment of being so exposed and demeaned, but I can be sure that whenever I am subjected to humiliation and disgrace, Jesus knows how I feel. Do I know the humiliation of being stripped of my dignity? Have I ever suffered the pain of being completely exposed, my inner self and secrets laid bare for the world to see? and maybe reject the real me.
A thought from Oblate Tradition. It was St. Eugene's hope that those who followed in his footsteps would strive to imitate the virtues and example of our Saviour Jesus Christ. We pray. Lord, give me the courage to feel comfortable with the real me that perhaps only I know. Help me to embrace my vulnerability as a means of coming closer to my brothers and sisters and to you. 